Well, Logan, you didn't have to ask for very many days, my friend. You better abuse these builds while you can because they are insane and there is no way Bungie will allow this. So yesterday I posted a video on the new exotic trace rifle and how we can have woven mail on any subclass with any build and I thought that this was pretty busted. And I still think that. Well today's video is just plain dumb and you're about to see why. So abuse this while you can everyone as it is some of the most fun I have had in Destiny 2 because you literally have 97% damage reduction or even higher depending on your build. And you can't die because we have unlimited restoration times two to stack right on top of that insane damage reduction. So in this video you are watching me at the second encounter in the new dungeon. And I thought this was a good place to show you all that we just can simply not die. Like at all. In a minute here I will show you it in master level content as well so you can get an idea of what it's like when we're being 25 power level under. But not only can we not die but we can do this on any subclass as well. And I mean any of them. So we can build into a nice solar build or even a strand build. Really whatever one you like the most you can adapt this build to. In this particular video the main build I will be showcasing is on a solar titan because I enjoy that one the most and that's because we can add in radiant and extend both restoration times two and radiant with ease. So it's probably the easiest way to play the build and technically it puts out the best damage with the build because we can stack radiant and surge mods on our boots. But if you want even more damage reduction, like pushing it up to 99%, then you would want to play it on Strand with Woven Mail. But pretty much all the mods would stay the same, and the weapons are up to you. So like you can see in the background, you can use this on any subclass with any sword. And there are some really good swords in the game. I would basically just match my sword based on what subclass I'm using. So if you're on Solar, I would use something like the Lament because it has anti-barrier built into it. Or if you didn't want to use it exotic, I would go with the Throne Cleaver because it can do some crazy damage and get incandescent and that's a lot of fun and then for void you could use the other half because it can get repulsor brace on it and that can play into a void titan build and get you over shields pretty easily or you could even go with heart shadow because it got updated this new season of season of the deep but i just want to showcase all those swords for you because there's a bunch of different ways you could play this but we're going to go the solar route and here's why solar is the easiest gameplay loop to accomplish and it makes for keeping restoration times two up all the time and you could even switch to a special weapon that's a solar weapon i was using a solar trace rifle and that can continue your chain of restoration times two and radiant just in case you don't want to have your sword out but the first main reason that we can become unkillable and make this all happen is because of these stronghold exotic gauntlets for the titan this maximizes guard stats on our equipped swords so that's nice and the first thing here is you take reduced damage while blocking with a sword this is a resist times four so like a 40 percent damage reduction just for blocking this is on top of your 100 resilience already, or on top of any chest mods that you're using for damage reduction. So already when you just block with a sword, you're getting a huge damage reduction for really nothing. For example, if you were on stasis, you would need to create a stasis crystal and have Whisper of Chains Fragment on to match this. Or with Strand, you would need to have Woven Mail proct to match that 40% damage resistance. But we get this for free just by blocking. So to really take advantage of this entire build, make sure you're using the block efficiently. Now the next part of this says rapidly damaging targets after blocking shots with a sword grants restoration for a duration determined by the number of shots blocked. Well this is just untrue and I think this is a known bug and I think Bungie already knows about this and that's the way it's supposed to work but in game currently all you have to do is hit something with a sword and you will get restoration times two for three to four seconds. You don't even have to kill an enemy you can just hit a champion or a high alt target and you will get that restoration. So first off, honestly, if Bungie does fix this to act based on the wording, I still think it's gonna be really good because you're gonna have that insane damage resistance. You can move in while blocking or take advantage of a point when the enemies are shooting at your teammates. And all you have to do is block, get close enough to something and hit them once. So either way, this is still gonna be really good even if it actually works the way the wording says. But currently in the game, it works just by hitting something. You don't even have to be blocking. But what makes this even better on a solar subclass is first off the fragment called Ember of Solace. Radiant and restoration effects applied you have increased duration. This means instead of the 3 to 4 seconds when you hit something, it actually jumps up to 6 or 7 seconds. So right off the bat, you have a good time of healing. But then when we pair this with a solar sword, so something like the Lament, you can throw on Ember of Empyrean. Solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of this restoration and radiant effects applied to you. So now we can boost this times two restoration up for 12 seconds and that's how you can just stand there and block. So you're getting the insane damage reduction 
but you also have restoration times two all the time, so your health doesn't move. And then on solar as well, to beef up our weapon, we can throw on Ember of Torches, powered melee attacks against combatants to make you and nearby allies radiant. So if you enter an activity, just throw your little mini hammer at something and pick it up, then switch to your sword and go to town. Because you'll have gotten radiant off that hammer throw for a 25% weapon damage boost to your lament, and then just hit something with lament and you extend that and proc restoration times two and extend it at the same time. And then since we started off by throwing our little mini hammer, we can even add in heavy handed to this where that creates an orb of power when we threw our mini hammer. And we pick up that orb of power and we have times three solar weapon surge on our boots for a 22% increase in damage on top of radiant on our solar weapon. So now our solar sword is hitting really hard and we can't die. If you guys wanna see the full text version of this build in one easy place, then the link will be down below for you all, and you can find it over on Mobilytics, a great source for Destiny 2 builds, and you can find all my builds over there as well. Now for the mods on the build, it's pretty simple because we're just gonna take advantage of anything we can with the sword. So on your helmet, you wanna run Harmonic Siphon, so whatever sword you're using can gen orbs of power. And then I was actually running double heavy ammo finder because you do wanna always keep up ammo in that sword. You could even run double special weapons with this, so you can always get heavy ammo to drop. On your gauntlets, like I said, heavy handed, and I also was running firepower to create orbs of power with my grenade. And then I had a solar dexterity mod on just to switch between my solar weapons pretty quickly. On the chest piece, you're either gonna take damage reduction if you need it, but in a lot of content, you're not going to need it. So I would take solar reserves or whatever sword you're using to get extra ammo for that sword. And then you can also take Lucent Blade, increase the energy recharge rate of your equipped swords. Just a nice little benefit there for our swords. On our boots, you are gonna take Triple Solar Surge to beef up that damage. And then on our class side, you're gonna take Time Dilation to extend our armor charge and our extra damage from those solar surges. I also took Powerful Attraction to pick up all those orbs if I just pop my barricade. And then also one Bomber Mod to feed my grenade. For the rest of the subclass, you just wanna use Roaring Flames and Soul Invictus. Now, sometimes the sunspots will revert the restoration times two back down to five or six seconds, but it really doesn't matter because you're always reprocking restoration times two by hitting an enemy. So I found this to be not really that much of an issue at all. And then Roaring Flames is just to beef up your melee and your grenade damage. And the last fragment I would take with this on top of Ember of Torches, Ember of Solace, and Ember of Empyrean would be Ember of Ashes. You apply more Scorched Axe to targets. This is for our grenade and also if you are using something like Throne Cleaver with Incandescent. It just plays right into it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful and learned something new. And I guarantee you this won't be the way this works forever, so I would use it while you can and have some fun with it. There's not a ton of times where we can just go have a lot of fun with swords, so I would definitely use this and take advantage of it right now because it feels so good to just get an enemy's face and sword him down. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.